Welcome to Next Games The Journey of Cyberlogic, a guide to Final Fantasy XI. Episode 15, Rise of the Zealart. Now over these last 15 episodes, we have covered roughly 50 hours of playtime. Now I'm going to give an overview of what was accomplished in each episode on the right there so that if you're just joining us in the series, you have an idea of what we've done up until this point. Now here we are at level 74 and about to do the first part of the expansion, Rise of the Zealart. Now as we work through this 15th episode and the Zealart expansion, we begin our transition to the start of Endgame. Now I want to be clear that I don't mean present day Endgame, as we are still a ways off from that, but that doesn't stop you from enjoying original Endgame content, which can be quite enjoyable and give you the experience many of us fell in love with so many years ago. Now we've been largely doing missions and quests since you started the game nearly 50 hours ago and it's time to slow down and enjoy actual gameplay more than we have been doing. Now in doing so, we will continue to level up on our path to 99, as well as work on our skills, which have become very underleveled over these last 15 episodes. Now after this episode, we will also have access to our fifth and final trust that we can finally make a full party to help us with taking on this new endgame content. Now to get started, we will be heading to Norg and clicking on the Oaken Door to speak with Gilgamesh. We need to do this twice, once to advance the Rhapsodies of Vanadil storyline and a second time to officially begin the Rise of the Zealard expansion. Now after these cutscenes, we will now focus on the Zealard expansion before continuing on with Rhapsodies as we will soon face our toughest fight yet in the Rhapsodies expansion and we want to make sure that we're as ready and as leveled as possible before we take it on. Now we next need to head for Kazam, which is not a place we have been yet in our journey, so it's going to be a bit of a hike. Now we first have to run through Sea Serpent Grotto until we exit at the Utunga Jungle, and then use a mount to speed along our travel from the south of this map to the north until we arrive at the village of Kazam, where we need to speak with the Chieftainess Jaco. She will give us a sacrificial chamber key and send us to the Temple of Ugalif, where once inside, we will need to travel to the Den of Rancor to take on a BCNM against Toneberries. Now you have three options to get to this fight. The easiest is to use the home point warp right into the Den of Rancor that puts you right outside the arena, but chances are you won't have that unlocked yet. We certainly don't in our playthrough. The second option is to use the Unity Warp 128 to the Den of Rancor, which puts us right where we need to be to access the BCNM after a little bit of legwork. The third and final option is to use a mount for the long trek through both jungles to the Temple of Ugalif, where we will complete a quest which will allow us to pass through the temple and into the Den of Rancor. Now I suggest using option two, which is what we'll be using here. Now once we use Unity Warp to get to the Den of Rancor, we want to immediately summon some trust as we will be doing a large amount of killing of the enemies in the surrounding area before we enter the arena. Now for the first time in our journey, I recommend not calling Valnoriel for your killing and instead tanking yourself as our skills have become very underleveled by this point and if we have any hope of taking on the challenges that lie ahead, we need to get them up to date. Now the main skills that we are concerned with on Ninja are Katana, Throwing, Ninjutsu, Evasion, and Parrying. I'm also using a Hornet's Needle Dagger in my offhand to speed up my attacks and skill up Dagger at the same time making it so that we are skilling up six different skills while we are killing things here, which should all be decent prey or easy prey to us at this point in the game. Now after we finish summoning our trust, we next need to get an unlit lantern to drop off of a Toneberry Imprecator in the area. Now I recommend using Lion 2 for Treasure Hunter and Semi the Ranger and Shantoto 2 for damage. You also want to use your Unity Trust for your curing in that fourth and final slot which at this stage of the game, really you should be using Yoran Oran. Now you'll notice that I'm using Sylvie here because I was testing her out, but after a few weeks of trying her out, I've really come to the conclusion that she isn't very useful before level 99, and Yoran Oran is going to be far better of a choice for us at keeping us alive on the pre-99 endgame content that is directly ahead of us. Now you will want to use your wide scan to locate imprecators in your area, but while looking for them and waiting for them to respawn, Make sure you're killing as many other mobs in the area as you can, as this is a great place to skill up and level. You really want to be capped at level 75 before you leave this zone. 
Now in my case, I entered having just hit level 74, and it took me only about 20 minutes to level it all the way up to 1 XP below level 76, since I was capped, so it really shouldn't take you that long. Now to find the most imprecators, you want to zone up to that first floor using the tunnel marked A on the map that you spawned on. Now once on that floor, you should find a number of them in the area here and here that make it a great spot to both farm the unlit lantern and skill up and level with. Now once it drops, you want to then take it to D3 on this same map and trade it to the Altar of Rancor like you see me doing here. Now once traded, it will become lit and you will now want to take it back down that tunnel labeled A and to this E5 area where you will find four lanterns that all need lit. You will need to trade your lantern to one of these four to light it. This will, however, remove the flame from your lantern and make it an unlit lantern once again. You then need to go back up to that first floor and light it three more times, each time coming back down to this location to light another one of these four lanterns. Once all four lanterns are lit, the door will open as you see here and we can proceed to the first Zealart battle. Now of course because each of these locations have mobs around them, you will frequently need to kill all of the mobs in the area in order to succeed with either lighting your lantern or lighting one of these pillars. This is fine as again it's all adding to the experience that you're getting. Be sure to grab the home point warp on your way to the battlefield so that you don't ever actually have to light these Rancor candles again. Now this PCNM fight is against three Toneberries and shouldn't pose much of a challenge to you with trust and if you are the same level as I am here. Now the three Toneberries are Gavaton, a Thief, Molly Bidon, a Black Mage, and Tungsivit, a Summoner, which is also the order I recommend killing them in, Thief, Black Mage, Summoner. Now the Black Mage and Summoner can be silenced and slept if you have the ability to do so, and you want to be sure to have a trust to tank these mobs, as everyone's grudge ability can be used, and if it is used and you've been killing Toneberries for the last hour or so, it has the possibility to one-shot you. Now the Summoner can also Astro Flow, but thankfully it hits for very little damage. Now for trust, I'm using Valnareel to tank, Semi the Ranger in Shantoto 2 for the majority of my damage, and Sylvie for cures. Now Valnareel's AoE weapon skill make him a perfect choice for keeping hate on all of the mobs while you fight them, as well as providing a good amount of upfront damage to each at the beginning of the fight. Now lastly, when Graviton uses perfect dodge, I recommend switching to the Black Mage to save time and keep the damage going. Now after the fight is done, you will be treated to yet another cutscene and will now be on Zealart mission number 5. Now this is as far in the Zealart storyline that you'll have to progress in order to finish the Rhapsodies of Vanadil storyline, so this is where we're going to stop for the time being so that we can pick up on the Rhapsodies storyline and get access to that fifth and final trust. Now after we finish with that, we will be immediately returning to the Zealart storyline to progress into it further and start our first endgame event, Sky. Look for this in episode 16 of the series. For now though, we first want to head back to Rulud Gardens in Juno and speak with the Moogle that is floating next to Matt, now that we are level 75. He is going to give us a key item called Limit Breaker that will allow us to now start collecting merit points. You get one merit point for every 10,000 experience that you earn. Now we will need three merit points and five kindred seals to uncap ourselves to level 80. And since we are currently maxed on experience, I chose to go ahead and head back to the Den of Rancor to quickly kill a few mobs and get the experience needed for these three merits. After only about seven minutes of killing mobs, I had the merits needed. I headed back to the Mughal in Rulud Gardens and traded him the three merits and five kindred seals to uncap myself for level 80. Now we next need to head back to Sea Serpent Grotto. Now I recommend taking the Unity Warp level 125 as it puts you only a few steps from the mark that you need to click on. Now once you use the Unity Warp, go ahead and turn around and walk right through the door and you should find the mark that you need to click on on the northeast side of the lake that you see in front of you. Now once that cutscene is complete, we want to run outside to Utunga Jungle at F11, which is just outside the area we zone to from Sea Serpent's Grotto. There, we will get a cutscene with Siren. Now once that cutscene is finished, we need to prepare ourselves for the hardest fight of our journey to date. Now I recommend summoning Valnareel, Semi the Ranger, 
Shantoto 2, and Yoran Oran for this fight. I sadly was affiliated with Sylvia at this point, so my fight was a little more challenging than it should be. Now I also recommend you use some form of sushi to boost your accuracy and ranged accuracy, as chances are this NM is going to be quite a bit above your normal accuracy range, that is unless your katana skill happens to be capped. Now the vast majority of your damage will come from Chantoto's magic burst, so you want to keep trying to skill chain with both Semi and Chantoto as much as possible during this fight. Try to use weapon skills that allow them to close with darkness skill chains, as I was finding when I tried to open with Jin and Ten, or light based weapon skills, that quite often it would occasionally cure them or Chantoto too would try and magic burst with arrow which would also cure Siren for a large amount. Now this can be a very long fight when taken on at this level, but hang with it and keep giving Shantoto 2 chances to burst, opening skill chains for both of them as soon as either Shantoto or Semi have TP. Now fortunately, Valinoreal tanks this quite well with minimal curing, so you should have the time needed to pull this win out. Now this particular fight took me 12 minutes to get the win, not going to go ahead and subject you to all 12 minutes, but if you did want to see the entire video, I'll be releasing it along with my Rhapsodies of Vanadeal cutscene series here in the coming day or two. So here we are at the end of the fight, roughly 10 minutes later. Now to my surprise, Semi has outdamaged Shantoto due to Shantoto's curing Siren a few too many times and due to Semi's potent Sidewinders. So note that even though you're wanting Shantoto to magic burst for your big burst of damage, Semi alone can do quite well in pulling her weight on this one. Now after we beat Siren, we click on the spot one last time for a final cutscene. Now once defeating Siren, we are rewarded with the Rhapsody and Azure key item, which gives us a 30% bonus to experience, limit point, and unity accolade gains. The lockout on re-entering Dynamis is also removed. You will now earn an assault tag every 10 minutes and can enter salvage every hour. Energar's Smoldering Lamps also now are reduced to only 1,000 gil for each, and you can enter every hour there as well. We won't be taking advantage of many of these benefits quite yet, but when we do get to these events in not too long, having this key item to reduce re-entry times will be critical. Now we now head back to Norg to click on the Oaken Door two times to advance the Rhapsodies of Vanadil storyline into Chapter 2. Now these next several missions go very quickly and are all easy to get to which makes this next part go very fast. Now we first need to enter Lower Delkfut's tower, so I take the Quiffum home point warp to get there quickly. After we get that cutscene, we then need to head to Juno and walk towards the palace in Rulud Gardens to trigger another cutscene. We then zone into Port Juno to get another cutscene and then click on the marble bridge door in Upper Juno for a final Juno cutscene. We now head to Whitegate. Since we already did our introduction to the Treasures expansion in episode 13, this part also goes very quickly. We start by simply zoning into Whitegate from any area and then follow that up by clicking on the Whitegate door for another cutscene and then head to Walhara Temple and then Sharahat Tea House for two more cutscenes. We now take the Runic Portal to Azadal Undersea Ruins to get another cutscene upon entering the zone. We now head back to town and click on the white gate one more time to conclude the Treasures of Art Urkhan part of the Rhapsodies of Vanadil storyline, and to get rewarded with the most important thing, the Rhapsody in Crimson. This gives us the ability to summon a fifth trust and gives us a 30% bonus to experience, limit point gains, and a 100% increase to combat and magic seal gains. Now to complete the next part of the Rhapsodies of Vanadil storyline, which involves the Wings of the Goddess expansion, we really need to be level 99 or higher. So we will stop with the Rhapsody storyline here at this point and switch back to the Zealart storyline with our fifth trust. Now speaking of trust, you want to be sure to keep a lookout for trust that are now offered during events throughout the year from various locations. For instance, getting the King of Hearts and Koltada from the Record of Eminence NPC becomes very important now as we will need them for the endgame content that lies ahead. Also note that we just earned the alter egos of Zed 2, Tenzen 2, Preesh 2, and Nashmiria 2 from the Rhapsodies of Venadil storyline missions that we just completed, so our trust options are quickly growing. 
We were also sure to start our Abyssia entry items accruing a few episodes ago, but we neglected to start our Void Watch entry items accruing. So make sure that you head to a Void Watch officer in your starting town and speak with them to start the Void Watch event so that your stones start accruing. Now you won't be doing this event right now, but you will want a large amount of stones available to you when you eventually get around to it. That's going to be it for episode 15 of the Journey of Cyberlogic. In the next episode, we will be taking on the Zealart expansion and getting to Sky, where we will take on the Sky Gods as well as continue our trek to level 99. This is your first visit to my channel and you enjoyed the content, please be sure to click the subscribe button under the video and the bell icon next to it to be notified when my future videos are released. Thanks so much for watching everyone, we'll see you next time. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.